From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to your statewide edition of Montana This Morning on this Thursday, October 31st. I'm Augusta McDonald here with Miller Robson. Happy, Happy Halloween, everybody. Ooh, yeah. We've got some decorations here. In the spirit this morning. In the spirit. Uh, a little bit of fun. Miller uh, stole them off the front desk. I did. Well done. It's going to bring some stuff from home, but as I was leaving <laughs> yesterday, I'm like, well, we got all we need right it's here. It's me. Just take Don't worry, it. Marla, if you're watching, I'll put these back when we get off the air, I promise. <laughs> so, so all right, so it is Halloween, of course. Yep. A lot of kids wanting to know about the trick treat forecast tonight, and we'll have that coming up. It is a chilly start this morning. We've got temperatures in the teens, 20s, and some 30s. Let's see here. 26 right now in Helena. We've got 18 in Butte down in Dillon. We're at 25, 21 in Bozeman, 24 in Missoula, 18 right now in Kalispell. Great Falls just above the freezing mark at 33. Haver along the High Line at 18, 32 in Glasgow as well as Jordan. Below the freezing mark in Mile City at 29. We've got 34 in Billings down in Cody. We're at 35 and 29 right now in Sheridan. With the uh, feels like temperatures, the wind chill out there, some areas a good 5 to 10 degrees cooler or colder than what the actual temperatures are. So we are starting to see a little short wave come into the uh, west, and we're going to see some rain and snow around Kalispell in Missoula. Uh, question is, will any of that affect the trick or treat forecast tonight? And I will let you know with the full forecast coming up just That's around the, the corner. That's the big question. All right, Miller, mm -hmm. thank you so much for that. We'll have that right. in a few. And our top story today out of Bozeman. A suspect has been identified in the brutal murder of a camper near Big Sky. The 35 year old Dustin Jersom was killed in his tent in the Moose Creek area on October 12th with the autopsy revealing multiple chop wounds, including to his skull. Not a lot of information is being released right now about the suspect. Gallatin County Sheriff Dan Springer says the person is in custody on unrelated charges and is cooperating, even leading investigators to previously identified evidence. He also says uh, the suspect is believed to have acted alone and there is no longer a threat to the community. The name of the suspect hasn't been released. We're told that there would be more information released as they file charges. Election day is now less than one week away, and that will finally mean the end of those political ads that have bombarded our airwaves. You might have noticed me and other members of the Q2 team in some of them, something that has raised concern for some viewers. But in reality, TV stations have little to no control over these commercials and how clips of our newscasts are used for political purposes. This morning, our Charlie Kleps is taking a closer look. Nowadays, political ads are everywhere you look. They could be on your phone, on Facebook, or even on YouTube. And you might every now and then find that an MTN News member is on one of these ads, which could be confusing and might appear as an endorsement of that candidate. But that's not the case, and here's why. I'm John Tester, and I approve this message. Let me stop that right there before you change the channel. Don't worry, this isn't another political ad. It's in your face all the time, and it's exhausting. I see it every day, every day on the news, every day on social media. We get it. Everybody is sick of them. I'm so over them. Not only do I get the calls, I get the text messages. I, I'm seeing them on any TV shows. Just like harassment in a, in a sort of way. To make matters worse, these ads, which are seemingly played on a repeating loop, aren't always the most accurate. The claims made in those ads are often um, less accurate uh, the closer you get. PolitiFact correspondent Lewis Jacobson says that it isn't uncommon for claims to stray further and further from the truth as Election Day approaches. It's a question of shading the truth, uh, sort of bending the truth a little bit. And if that wasn't confusing More enough... questions about the injury she claims to have received... Well, there's a familiar face, but why is Russ Riesinger in an ad for John Tester? As long as you don't steal you know, an entire newscast or something like that. It's not a problem for like anybody to use that. It's because of the fair use doctrine, meaning clips of newscasts are free to use because they're public information and news stations like KTVQ don't even have to be consulted. Sometimes it makes me think that the whole news station in general supports that candidate. The problem is clips often don't provide full context and can make it seem like a journalist is supporting one party or candidate. They're just trying to get the opinion across for everyone, no matter if you guys believe it or not. It may seem like that anchor is, uh, you know, endorsing that candidate. It's not the case. Just another confusing element during an election year. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.
Charlie, thank you so much for that story. And out of the Capitol, Senator Steve Daines says regardless of how well Republicans do in their bid to take back control of the U.S. Senate, he won't be running for party leader. Daines told the news website Semaphore he'd made a firm decision not to seek the position left open by retiring leader Mitch McConnell. He said he wants to spend more time with his family and in Montana after two years leading the nationwide Republican campaign to win back a Senate majority. Daines has become a close ally of former President Donald Trump. National reports said Trump had encouraged him to run for Senate leadership. Daines will be up for re-election in Montana in 2026. And in Missoula, major improvements continue at the airport with phase one in the rear view. We look forward to the developments of phase two. MTN Cynthia Carranza visits the site to tell us more. While the airport doesn't look really busy right now, the holiday season is around the corner. So foot traffic is bound to increase. Let's get the inside scoop on how they're preparing for this busy holiday season and some new add-ons in the midst of it all. This is the first time I've flown into the airport with the new extension. And it's, uh, it's beautiful when you get out and you see this uh, view. Missoula's airport has undergone a major transformation over the past few years with a brand new terminal that includes more dining options and gates. But construction of a second terminal is already underway with Director Brian Elistad overseeing all of these changes. So if you like our first bar, we'll have a repeat, we'll have a second bar on the, in the next phase that will, won't have a deck attached to it, but again, you'll be looking out over the airfield and have a great view of Lolo Peak. Phase two is not just limited to food, though, as more bathrooms will be added, a permanent baggage claim and more gates to handle the influx of travelers. Again, it'll be much, much better once we open up the, uh, the second part of the building and getting that permanent baggage claim and more gates. The terminals may not be the only part of the airport expanding, as there is potential for parking expansion as well. While that may not happen before Christmas, Elistad hopes holiday travelers will use the recent addition of economy parking on the east side of the terminal. Despite the second terminal's construction, passengers say they're already seeing a difference when passing through Missoula's airport. I think the easy access, um, getting in, getting out quickly, uh, it's not cumbersome at all, it's a very direct uh, a communication. Robert Elion is from Pennsylvania. He flies into Missoula often because his daughter lives in Stevensville. And the really nice thing about it is this open open window. It really welcomes you. It's like your arms are being open wide and say, come to Montana, come home. So it's nice. Those changes are on schedule and we can expect to see results of labor by May of 2025. In Missoula, Cynthia Carranza, MTN News. Cynthia, say, thanks so much. Downtown Kalispell is a staple in that community, from parades to picnics in the park. But some say one Friday night tradition downtown has created more headache than community. While city officials decided this week not to implement any changes for the Kalispell cruise, MTN's Kiana Wilson breaks down why a possible ordinance was discussed in the first place. On Monday night, Kalispell City Council held a work session to discuss concerns with downtown traffic on Friday nights. The traffic on Friday nights is from people who cruise Main Street to show off their cars. While car cruises have been happening for decades, the Kalispell cruise really kicked off in 2020 during COVID as a way for people to get out and connect with the community. The event has continued and has sparked concerns in the community. It is not just the impact on Main Street. It is the impact to the neighborhoods that surround the east and west sides of town. It is not fair that my children have to have noise canceling in their rooms. Some of the complaints brought to the city council include reckless driving, speeding, burnouts, and noise. Some city council members wanted to see an ordinance or some sort of restriction on the downtown cruising. I do think, though, there are real impacts. We've heard about reckless driving, and certainly that's been documented in, in video, and, and people who are present seen it, um, reported it. Uh, that's a big part of this, and we can't be policing it at all times. So that's an, that's an issue. Another part of it, though, a big part of it is the noise. While a majority of counselors were against taking any action. Council Cruz is about as American as it gets. I, I will not be any part of taking this away from our people, our citizens who pay for these roads. 
Councillor Sid Dowd said it is a violation of rights to try and implement a restriction on cruising and would limit the community's ability to drive on the roads they pay for. I'm going to be vehemently against this and I will do everything in my power, hopefully to make sure that it doesn't go to council, uh, national council people. And if it does, I will fight it to the them. Many of the public comments were from people who support the cruise. A majority of cruisers spoke on the fact that it is a few people who are causing the problems, and most are simply there to have fun. And I think there's a bad egg in no matter what you do. I'm just out enjoying, as I'm a fourth generation man, you know, resident here in the valley. My grandparents cruised, my parents cruised, I met my wife cruising, and I'm going to take my kids cruising. So whether there's an ordinance or not, it's not going to stop me from going out and enjoying something that has been something for so long. With the majority of city council in opposition of creating some sort of ordinance around the cruise, the council will not move forward on this issue. However, they do hope to see some sort of self-policing from the cruisers and hope to see a decline in issues moving forward. In Kalispell, Kiana Wilson, MTN News.